overnight workers become conscripts. Now we already have the strictest anti-trade un trade union laws anywhere in Europe. We've got to jump through hoops, reach thresholds, tell the police where every picket line is. In addition to that, if this bill is passed, we're going to have to listen to the bosses telling us we have to come to work and we have to cross our own picket lines just to go on a strike day. And it's not going to happen. At my place of work, the workers are not going to cross those picket lines. So that's going to end up in more disciplinaries. It's going to end up in more disciplinaries, more strike action and more disruption on the railways. This bill diminishes our collective bargaining and trade union agreements. Bosses can impose whatever they like on us, knowing that we can't fight back against it. Now we need to mobilise. We need to get the people on the streets. We need those MPs, the opposition MPs over there, on these demonstrations beside us, on our picket lines beside us. That's where we need them, not tucked over there. So we need to take a message back into the workplace and back into our communities, and we need to explain to people exactly what losing the, the right to strike will mean. And we need to mobilise. We need to get onto the streets. And we need to let this government know, this Tory government, that we will not accept any attacks on our right to strike. Thank you so much, Jim. So next up is Carmen, a teacher and NASUWT rep. Whoa, what a mouthful. Let's put our hands together for her. Like many public sector teachers, public sector workers, our hours have increased for less pay. Our workload has increased during the pandemic and since teachers have gone above and beyond to provide an outstanding education to children and young people and to make the government's underfunded recovery program a reality where there was little money but let very few resources for children and young people instead of owning up to this the government sought to tag on extra unpaid hours taking us above our contracted hours over the last 12 years, teachers' pay has fallen and further and further behind other comparable graduate professions. We are expected to just suck it up as they sit there over there having free or reduced um, lunches and dinners. We know that teachers are amongst the rising numbers of professions such as nurses who are using food banks. I am a benevolence officer for NASUWT and I have been so busy busier than I've ever been before. Inflation is still in double figures. Many teachers can no, no longer afford to do jobs and may have already jumped the ship into other jobs. Meanwhile, my union has published research showing that four out of five teachers say that their workload and stress has increased. Imagine if we did not have the right to strike to protest against those decronian measures. The right to strike is enshrined in international law, but believe me, we do not take industrial action readily. We are passionate about teaching and ensure that our learners achieve. It takes a lot for us to actually exit the classroom and to stand on a picket line, but we are moved, we are so moved because we can no longer tolerate coming under such direct and a sustained attack. We are a force to be reckoned with. We must have the right to stand up for the causes we believe in. Decent paying conditions for teachers, a properly and fairly funded education system, a society and a country that invests in children and young people. In the face of a government that won't listen, we are driven to industrial action. Who amongst us actually gets paid £100,000 a year should we prove to be so incompetent that we leave a post after 50 years? Has that happened?